Hello guys, today is the day where my 6th character has tried the surface of tier 4 arc passive stuff because they all reached 1680. This video will cover a quick basic review of my classes, in my opinion after trying them out with tier 4 arc passive nodes on. When I can, I'm planning to make more detailed videos about it, but as of now, I'm not quite knowledgeable about the min-maxing part of the classes, and also none of the builds are set in stone. But the fundamental playstyles won't change, and this is what I'm going to talk about it here. Before I start, since there are way too many people still ask this, just take the knowledge as a clean state. As for tier for stuff but you basically allocate points freely. Tier 1 is combat stat allocation, like how much crit or how much spec, etc. you want. And tier 2 and 3 are basically relic set bonuses, and tier 4 is the new stuff. So here, most asked question is when why some classes don't do back attacks. That is because the entropy equivalent thing on arc passive is this one, and it does bonus crit damage at directional skills. Meaning, as long as your skill is a back attack or a head attack skill, you get this benefit of damage boosts. So hitting your skills at the back or front just gives you the additional benefit like crit rate and damage. Some classes are focused to do back attacks and front attacks, but most of the classes, the reason why they're kind of taking away Master of Ambush or etc, that is because they want to play non-entropy-ish style for entropy classes. Well, obviously you can do back attack to get the benefit of having higher crit rate and more damage for head attacks. As for engravings, you can freely allocate them too. So for example, if I'm using Keen Blunt and you're not wondering, oh, how come you're not using Cursed All? That's because I can just switch it on the fly like this. This is actually really important because you can actually try it for yourself and change it back and forth as long as you read the legendary books for it. If you don't have the legendary books for it, obviously you have limited selections. For example, I don't have legendary books for Ambush Master, so most of my characters are not using this. But think of it as you can freely allocate and change things as long as you read the books. And with all that, this means you can pretty much set up any build you want. That's why I was able to try Red Glancer and Blue Glancer. The only thing that will stop you from trying different builds is gems and rolling them with silver. And since I have enough silver, I can go back and forth, but I'm trying to save them. That's why I'm sticking with blue right now. So again, if you guys ever wonder about engravings or people not doing back attacks and stuff, just remember, we have something completely different and you will understand when season three hits for you guys. Okay, so let's go over my main first. So Gunlancer, there's going to be blue and red, same thing. And the playstyle is pretty much the same thing, but it's adjusted a little bit. Let's talk about the blue first. You have the blue line and the red line, and this is level 3 combat readiness, and this is level 3 lone knight. And you can only choose one path, so I can't level these up and then level 1 here. Very simple, blue or red Gunlancer, you get to dash forward. And if you dash forward, you get some attack speed buff. And this does make it a little bit more speedier play because you can skip during your dash. And what's really cool is when you have the tier 4 node open, you don't need to have Bash anymore. And that is because Bash has this thing called a ready attack buff. And if you enable this tier 4 node, this ready attack buff gets stronger. And then you have it as a passive as long as you turn on your combat readiness. So you take away Bash and then you allocate more damage skills or you allocate more utility skills. So far, most people have this skill allocation where you use your uh, shield Bash for synergy. And then you always have Dash Upper Fire ready to go. And this Nella can be something else, but you have the Nella for utility and you can use your X skill and as for hyper awakening skill you have this thing called a shield dash it does the one destruction it has high stagger and it's an head attack and this skill is actually really really powerful it actually does the heaviest damage out of all skills the animation is pretty short and in the future if you level this up I can actually give some shields to my team so overall, I think Blue Gunlancer is pretty chill. You don't have to be locked in towards uh, ready attack. You will be just pianoing your skills and then doing damage. And you don't have to be forced to doing head attacks except the C skill. If you want more damage on your hyper skill, you do need to hit it from the you do need to hit it from the front. As for hyper awakening, it's the same thing. It provides exact same buffs. It's just that it just does a little bit more damage. So for example, this one still gives you 10% crit rate, but the damage itself does a lot. Okay, and going over the Red Gunlancer, it's the same thing. You will need to start with Bash for the synergy, and then you shout, and then you Surge Cannon and Charge Singer. Same thing. When you turn on your Z with the 4th tier passive, you get to walk a little faster with the shield on. Before, the shield depletion was really bad, but the shield depletion stuff is actually so much easier to keep up your shield. And as for the Hyper skill, it's like a charging lance skill. It does more damage than the other one, the shield charge, but the cooldown is much higher. The weird thing is the hyper skill itself is not a charge skill, so it, it doesn't get any benefits from supercharge, but the skill itself do does decent amount of damage, and it's also head attack skill. Both red and blue uses the guardian one, or if the blue Gunlancer wants more crit rate, they use the other one. But this is the same thing. The awakening itself just has a larger area. 
So as for Verdict, I'm probably going to make another video about it in detail on playing blue and red. But what's really important is one time on my stream session, blue gun lancer technically needs master elixir and red gun lancer uses critical. And I did not have master elixir and I recently made one. So for bro shots at raid, I am going to play blue, but I'm actually able to switch to red if I think blue gun lancer is unbearable in terms of like walking speed. Because the walking speed of blue gun lancer is kind of slow. And if bro shots has mechanics like where you need to run around everywhere, maybe the mobility of red could be better. But in terms of going to the new Broshasa raid, I am probably taking blue gun lancer. Okay, next class up is my bard. And as for our supports, the tier two and three nodes are these two over here. And this is the yearning portion of it. And as for the fourth tier node, you have stand up fighting, mana forge, and stability. Most people are doing mana forge, but if you're lacking a lot of mana, you can just use stand up fighting. Basically stand up fighting, as long as you don't get knocked over or get paralysis, you, you don't lose stacks. So you have a choice between mana forge and stand up fighting. And this is because stability, you do get additional brand power, but you gain less identity meter. And I heard that in the long term, it's a pretty big difference. Basically, tier 4 node for Bard, you get to have up to 4 bubbles. And the side nodes, you just get more mana. As for the other tier 4 node, this is the same for all supports. Basically, you can refresh your marking by just simply pressing Z. So going over the 4 bubble a little bit more, uh, just because you have 4 bubbles, that doesn't mean you can do a 4 bubble buff. It's still 3 bubbles. It's just that when you do it, you have an extra bubble to be playing around with because you have another bar of meter that you can work with. That's basically it. And as for the hyper skill, this is the same case for every single class. You use the T skill, I switched it to C. And this is another buff. It gives you 10% buff to all your teams. And there's another one where for 30 seconds, your Hyper Awakening does bonus damage. It does 20% bonus damage. So you actually have to sync up with your teammates to use your Hyper skill so that your party mates can use Hyper Awakening afterwards. And since the duration is 30 seconds, you can actually plan it pretty easily. And as for the Hyper Awakening itself, the effect is the same thing. It's just the animation is different. We have a big piano here. It does decent amount of damage, and for 30 seconds, the whole team gets to have a Crisis Evasion, and this is really cool. So generally, Bard is actually pretty nice because the bonus tripod for the Hyper Awakening skills, if I use the T skill, I can recover 7% mana immediately, and my party mates can have 5% additional mana recovery rate as well. So I am not like the best support player, but I am definitely having fun playing Bard at the moment. And my other support, which is Artist, which we will go over, both of the supports are pretty chill for me. And the changes within it just made the support play much easier, and then it's a lot more versatile. Okay, next going over my Artist, since we were talking about supports. The Evolution tab is basically the same thing, except the allocation between Swiftness and Spec. And going over the Enlightenment, the left side is basically the same thing. The Bard had max mana, but for Artist, if you use Z, you get to also provide Shield. But the Shield amount itself is not that big. And this is the same thing for Marking, where if you use Z, you can also mark the target as well. So for the Tier 4 node for Artist, you can do a 1 bubble buff. The duration is only 5 seconds, but the buff amount is still 10%. When you're using a proper buff, which is the two bubble buff, you get 5% of your identity meter back. So this is more focused on rotating as many Zs as you can. So going over here, if I use the two bubble buff, I have it for 10 seconds, correct? Yeah, you also have a 5% refund on the identity meter. And so in during this phase, if you want to give the Z buff again, you can press, you can simply just press the Z key again. It will spend one bubble and then the buff will last five seconds instead. So this is really cool because imagine you have the full meter and then you use your two bubble buff. I know some people, like especially me, when I'm in a situation where I'm generating meter but I have my awakening up, if I use my awakening at this state, I'd be wasting a little bit of meter, right? Because of that, I usually use like the X key for the heal and then I use the awakening to fill up the bubble. But now what you can do is, let's say you have meter up here, I can just simply press the 5 second version and then just press the awakening to get the two bubbles back. So this kind of play is possible, it just makes it a lot easier. And as for the hyper awakening skill, the T skill is the same thing as Bard. It's just that she draws a dragon on the floor. So there is an easter egg where this, dra this drawing itself becomes like uh, a goofy drawing. The drawing that Nia has. Oh, there it is. So it looks like a little funny cartoon drawing. So that's an Easter egg over here. And as for Hyper Awakening, same thing, uh, but she just walks on the flower fields. Uh, it gives you, it gives the teammate 30 seconds of Crisis Evasion and a big amount of shield. The Hyper Awakening skills and the Hyper Awakening itself is the same for all three supports. 
So generally the playstyle of artists became a lot faster, you can rotate your Z much faster, you have an option to use one bubble Z, it became a lot easier to maintain the buffs. So generally if I wanted to do a comparison between Bard and Artist, I do have a much easier time doing an average performance on Artist. Other than that, the two supports I'm playing are really really fun at the moment. Okay, talking about my Slayer. Slayer I recently switched to Predator instead, uh, we'll talk about Punisher in a bit. So for Predator Slayer, you have full swiftness and then you have damage, you have level 1 on the entropy, and then you have Sonic Breakthrough. What Sonic Breakthrough basically does is if you have exceed attack speed and movement speed, it converts into damage. Going over the enlightenment, basically if you open the tier 4 node, you basically have like a stack. If you have 10 stacks of it, you do 10% more damage. So you're kind of like building up, you're warming up. But if you de-transform, you need to warm up again. So most people are kind of like upset about that kind of stuff. Basically the playstyle is the same thing, but with an addition to hyper awakening skills. So the hyper awakening skills, you have the stab motion one. So this is the spiral blade stab motion. And then we have flame blade where you charge up and then you do a long distance like a long distance slash. So the flame blade does a lot more damage and it's a charge skill and the stabbing skill is actually much faster and it does a lot of hits. Most people are using Spiral Blade right now because it's much faster animation and it kind of fits for Predator. As for playstyle, it's basically the same thing. You activate Conviction Judgment and then you rotate whatever the skill that you need. And what most people have been asking me was how come you're not doing back attacks you basically don't need to do it anymore as i explained in the very beginning of the video back attack is not mandatory so if you want like you know higher crit rate i will be doing back attack but so keeping an up cape on your meter is more important so if i can't do back attacks i will be just spamming skills back and forth so that i can keep my meter up and for punisher you basically get enhanced transformation if you use your z what this essentially means is if i transform and if i use z right away Basically, you get this blue effect, and within this blue effect, you have a higher version of the transformation. You get you do 4% more damage on your skills. So what Punisher needs to do is when they transform, you will always need to start with Z before you land your uh, Brutal Impact and your main DPS skills. And with an addition to Flame Blade, which is the Hyper skill, you start with a Z and then you use Flame Blade, which is another charge skill, which is a charge skill, to land it, and then you would need to land rest of your rest of your main DPS skills on top of that. Uh, Punisher is a little bit more complicated than Predator, and that's probably why I switched it at, at the time, is because most people are still doing researches where some people want 1.5 cycle, some people want one cycle, some people want six second cycle, etc. Before, I used to use Z to survive the tenacity, right? Let's say you're in like uh, Theomine Gate 3, he's about to do a jump attack. I usually use Z so that I can not get knocked out and stay and do damage. But since you're forced to use your Z right after the transformation, and the Z itself is very long animation, correct? So you have such a short time to land all your main DPS skills. Obviously, some of the Korean players can do that. They're much better, but I'm not really much of a player with a great uptime. And when I played Punisher Slayer on like hard egg gear and stuff, it was so hard for me to land Flame Blade, Brutal Impact, Volcano Eruption, and two Guillotines, and then like two Furious Claws. Well, it's actually impossible to land all that in one cycle before your transformation runs out so people are doing like different calculations of what to do maybe in the future there might be a different uh, balance patch change but at the moment the playstyle itself is so difficult for me that i switched to predator but i really enjoy playing punisher so whatever stuff's changed back i might come back playing punisher because it's not that difficult to switch back because most of the gems are pretty much the same and as for hyper awakening both both play styles use the demon one it's really cool a big demon comes out and then it stabs the ground twice and it does a lot of damage so generally i did switch to predator and i'm having a lot of fun with it it's speedy and i don't have to worry about hitting back attacks all the time so i'm more focused on trying to have an upkeep so i can keep my meter up more and in the future again if there's like another additional balance patch and if punisher gets a little bit easier i might switch back okay talk about my gunslinger now for gunslinger you can allocate crit and spec and you can allocate the tier 2 and 3 bonuses as well to play around how much crit rate you want. And this is basically based on what your tier 4 node is. You can have Blunt Spike or you can also have the Mana Forge. And I'm playing the Blunt Spike version. And for Blunt Spike version, you basically need a crit rate of 70% because 70% plus 30% on like the shotgun stuff. And then if you have 
uh, 14% of adrenaline, you have 114%. And if you have a synergy on top of that, you're way above what is required for your shotgun. And you have just enough to get the full efficiency for blood spike for your rifles. So I've been doing that and then you see like really high numbers and it's really fun to see some too. Some people do allocate like limitless magic on level two, something like this. And then they allocate like more damage over here so that they can allocate more crit here and then have less spec and then you rotate much faster and because of that you will have mana forge some of these builds do exist and i don't know which does better uh because no one did like the min maxing things and stuff i think they're all pretty much the same it's based off of like would you like to have 80 percent flat crit rate or you want to crit all the time but if you have limitless magic uh a lot of people who play gunslinger i did ask them they did say the cooldowns are too fast so the skills do play around with it so much balanced option is you have something like a 12 percent crit rate with two percent damage and then you have a decent amount of cooldown and you allocate the stuff accordingly to have about 50 percent or about 60 percent crit rate to have about 90 to 100 percent crit rate on shotguns and then you have a decent amount of crit rate on rifles too and the reason why that is really important is because if you go over to enlightenment tab if you level up the last peacemaker t4 node you get to have the buff from all three guns at once whichever guns you swap so you know how you have additional attack speed for handguns and then you have additional crit rate for shotguns and then you have additional damage for rifles basically you have all three of these buffs regardless of what you're switching to therefore you really don't need swiftness anymore and the new gunslinger with the t4 node itself is so much faster because of the 10 percent attack speed so basically as you see me fighting guardian here it's much more speedier play and your damage is decent and overall the play style itself became a lot more swiftier and not clunky anymore and the crit imbalances are much closer gap so personally i do like it a lot going over the side notes basically the secret bullet you have like a two percent chance to do additional 25 percent damage and then you have 25 percent chance to do additional two percent damage so it's like an rng damage some people do have this for the sake of it to see big numbers randomly and for the gun swap tech, basically you swap handgun skills. Let's say you use two handgun skills and then you swap to your gun, you have additional damage. But no one really uses this because it's kind of buggy. As for weak point expert, this is on rifle skill only. So this is more of a time to hunt build. So not really interested in that one. And as for sniper's will, the number of sniper skills you use, you get up to three stacks and then you get additional attack speed and then additional crit damage. And you lose stacks if you use your space bar. So if I show you here, if I use the if I use my rifle skill again, so I have one stack and then I have two stacks and then I have three stacks here. And then the stacks do gather up pretty quickly and it lasts a long time. If I use a space bar, I lose a stack. And if I use the rifle skill again, I get three stacks again. Since I have three stacks, I basically have 3% crit damage and then additional movement speed and attack speed. So as long as you don't use your space bar as much, uh, you should be able to have a great upkeep on this buff. So a lot of people are having uh, this as a side note for the crit damage and or some people have the secret bullet for uh, the potential damage increase and the RNG damage increase. So I don't play TTH at all, but for tier 4 TTH node, you basically have another X skill. So you'd be just firing your handguns and then you'd be firing that rifle. Uh, and that's about it. I actually don't know anything about TTH and uh, I'm not really interested in playing it. And going with Hyper Awakening skills. So basically you have the rifle version, handgun version, and the shotgun version. In order for it to use that particular skill, you need to be on that stance. So since I'm in handgun stance, I can use the handgun hyper skill. So this the C skill will be just me firing. And the shotgun version is basically like the sharpshooter, but you kind of move backwards. So a lot of people are using the shotgun version because it's a lot easier to land uh, because the AOE is pretty large. The only thing that people don't like is how she does like a back jump, right? Um, so what they do is they face backwards and then use that so that they can kind of stay within the boss's range to keep in distance. And the one I'm using is Bullseye. So what this does is a casting skill. This takes a very long time to charge and it fires a bullet. This particular skill does massive damage. Sometimes I've seen like 1.5 million based on uh, what kind of buff I get. The reason why I'm using this is because you can, even though the charge is long, you can actually cancel yourself out by walking away. You can actually cancel it if you think you're going to miss it. And since I'm using the sniper's will and this is a sniper skill, I can get the stacks for the sniper's will as well. So that's like the only reason. I think it's more of a preference still, but a lot of people are using the shotgun one or the rifle one. The shotgun one is much easier to rotate and much easier to land, while as the rifle one does a uh, big number damage and uh, it's satisfying to see some big numbers. 
And as for some tripods, there's a lot of them. You can only choose one, by the way. As for shotgun, you get to have tenacity, which is really nice. Uh, and as for the rifle version, you can have a regular casting. So I don't know how fast that's going to be, but it's different. And you get to even have a longer time to charge up, but you do additional like 20% damage. So I think it's more of based on uh, preferences. And it's really nice that you can just switch on the fly based on what you like. The handgun is basically the Chaos Dungeon version because it, it does additional damage to seed monsters. So for Gunslinger, generally, uh, I'm having a lot of fun playing the Gunslinger. I don't know how strong it is, honestly, but uh, in general, the playstyle itself is pretty clean. The additional attack speed makes it really fun to rotate skills more. The new Hyper Awakening skill, I get to see some big numbers. So I'm not really complaining too much and having a lot of fun with it too. Okay, lastly, talking about my Shadow Hunter, I've actually recently reached a 1680 with my Shadow Hunter, so this is the reason why I was making the video. So as for Shadow Hunter, uh, it's generically spec and crit, and then you have the damage, and then you have the crit rate increase which is 24%, and then I'm using stand up fighting right now. So the, apparently there's some research where if you have like really good crit rate from like bracelets and like rings and stuff, Shadow Hunters can pull off blunt spike because you get 30% crit rate from the engraving itself. And since you'll be having level 3 on Adrenaline, there's a lot of crit rate that you can stack up with. But since I don't have enough, I just did a generic uh, stand up fighting and have just damage stacked up on the second tier. So for Enlightenment, this is basically the same thing. And if you open up the tier 4 node, you get to have a new skill. So when you want to use the new skill, which is the X skill, you need to have 60 stacks on while you're transformed. And then when you do a normal attack, it's based on like the numbers that you see. So if I do like a normal attack, I get three stacks each. And if I use my R skill, since I'm hitting a lot, I get like a, a bunch of stacks. But S is like one stack. You will need to mix in autos to fill this up as fast as you can. And when X skill is activated, you get to press X. This is a jump skill. And then you, you, you get to explode in a large radius. The damage is basically a little bit more than Blood Massacre, which is the main DPS skill, so it's very nice. And it can get more powerful too, as long as you level up the tier 4 node on top of that. And as for side nodes, this node basically as long as you land your skills, your spacebar's cooldown goes down a little bit. So you can use your spacebar a lot more often. And as for this one, you get 3 stacks. And per stack that you have, you do bonus damage. If you get paralysis or if you get knocked out during transformation, the buff does go down per stack. So if you get hit a lot, this side node is going to be, be very hard for upkeep. As for hyper skill, we have another damage skill. If you press C, you get to go down. And you get to travel and then come out as a, a big damage. So three tick damage and the tick is just as much as blood massacre. So it's like three blood massacres in one. So if I just use it here. And for those of you who are wondering, you notice I'm, all, I'm underground. I thought you were not going to get hit during underground. But if you get hit during underground, you do get knocked over. Because this skill does not have any tenacity. So you could use it as a gap closer. Or you can press it really quickly twice. Not to get out right away. And as for the tripods, I'm actually curious what this is going to be. It does turn into a normal skill instead of a combo skill, or it just simply does a lot more damage. The skills tripod does say the after animation frames are decreased. So as in like, you can have much faster, much more concise animation during the C skill, because the C skills animation is pretty long. Instead of a combo, I guess you would do this. And after the explosion, you get to use your skills much faster. So during streams, I do get this question a lot by people saying, is the eyeshadow really good? I honestly don't know if it's good, but I've always had fun playing this class because it's, it's very simple with six skills. Since we have additional two skills, the uptime became a lot busier. For example, when you transform, you would use your main DPS skills like so. So you'd be just fighting like this over and over. And if you fill up your X skill, you're basically using your X skill here. And then you use your main skills again. And the meta right now is you de-transform on purpose. And by the time you de-transform, you have your transformation skills again. Right? And then you transform right away. And then you rotate your skills again to hopefully use your X skill again. So the class became a lot faster in terms of rotation. The class is still super simple. In terms of damage, I actually don't know where we are, but in terms of playstyle and fun, I'm having a lot of fun with it. That's why I raised it to 1680 to see the X skill. And now that I raised to it, and then I, after I played Egg Gear hard, I was having a lot of fun playing with her. Lastly, for Hyper Awakening, same thing. Uh, you need to be transformed for it. The skill itself is decent. You see a bunch of numbers. 
And then the animation itself is pretty cool too. Talking about the PS version for it, honestly, I did not play PS Shadowhunter since the Entropy version. The Hitmaster version, I actually never tried it either other than the uh, the quick video that I made before a long time ago. I did ask my static member uh, that plays PS Shadowhunter. Basically, she is playing the Hitmaster variant version for it. And if you happen to level up the tier four node for it, you get an X skill. And what this X skill does is you get to launch another Hitmaster-like skill and it does a decent amount of damage and every time you do it for the third time you get to you get to generate additional meter so so there's three stacks here if i use it again i get the meter back every third stack the spenders you have a side node where you can naturally generate meter and then you do additional damage on skills that you use as a spender i actually don't know the min max skill allocation for it maybe in the future i just need to ask it as a detail but i'm not really interested in playing the ps shadow hunter so one thing to mention why ps shadow hunter became really really powerful is because of bleed effect so bleed effect long time ago didn't get any buffs like as in like the gem effects or like the buffs and all stuff all these things together but now the bleed effect itself the gem does impact the bleed damage and the buffs impact the bleed damage all that together so you have this thing where since spinning weapon has bleed cruel cutter has bleed and pierce thorn has bleed as well so you have all these bleed uh tripods stacked up and then with all these bleed damages together you are keep rotating skills and keep refreshing bleed while you're generating meter so i heard that they're really pumping as well but i'm not sure like how much they're actually pumping but the bleed damage does have a serious impact and since you have additional x skills to rotate as well uh, they became more piano than ever but they're all using the hitmaster portion of the build as for the hyper skill it, it kind of dashes forward and jumps back and, and stabs i think the animation is pretty long though so i don't know how the ps shadowers feel about that and as for hyper awakening it's a little bit different you have this black hole thing spawn and then it's going to do massive damage in the middle so yeah, I think most of the Shadowhunter players near me are having fun with it. Most of them are playing DI. PS Shadowhunter is not that much, but for PS Shadowhunter, they play it due to uh, massive pianoing and they have additional skills to use and they stack a lot of bleed damage on top of that. So it sounds a lot more fun, but I'm not really interested in it. What I'm really interested in is the new DI Shadowhunter and I'm probably going to play that for a while. And lastly, good thing about DI Shadowhunter is she can pretty much use any gems from other classes because the gems itself gives you 0.8% of base AP. She basically has 8% additional attack power uh, for borrowing gems from other classes. So it's a two gem class, but she can also use different gems from different classes to take advantage of it. So it's super efficient, which is what I like too. Okay, that wraps up my review video of the classes that I have. The information in this video isn't quite useful and basic for people who are already aware, but generally, I like all my classes at the moment and the decision I made. That is the purpose of the video. I don't know in terms of performance, but I'm not having any issues clearing any raids. And in addition to hyper skills and playstyle changes from T4 nodes, the combat became so much more fun for me. It's really exciting. Some players in Korea want changes to some of the classes, like Slayers who are focused to use Z for Punisher, or any other classes that got a lower end the changes. Hope those classes get the help they need in the future and I will definitely look into it more when that happens for any of my classes. Hope you guys like this video. When I have more information in the future, I do want to talk about the classes a little bit more. Until then, thanks for watching guys. Bye bye!